Hey Lenny's and Bunny lovers, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm making a very important video on the top signs that your rabbit is very, very sick. Now, this can be hard to discern because rabbits are not vocal. They typically are not going to tell you that they're sick with sounds or noises. Instead, you're going to try to detect illness mainly through their behavior. So this is what really separates them from dogs and cats for the most part. Now I have made a couple videos on signs that your rabbit is dying. I know, morbid, but also very important, and signs that your rabbit needs your help. These are very two different videos from the one I'm making today, but I do feel like they complement what I'm gonna be discussing, so I do encourage you to check those out. Without further ado, please subscribe, smash the like button, hit the bell for unlimited bunny content, and let's hop right into this. Please note, I am not a vet and I cannot diagnose your rabbit. This video should not be used to formally diagnose your rabbit, but instead used as a helpful guideline. If your rabbit is displaying signs of illness, please seek professional vet care from a rabbit specialist. Okay, so the first sign, and this is one of the most critical signs in my opinion, because everything else I'm gonna discuss in this video is going to lead up to this point. All right, and that is your rabbit stops eating. Their appetite changes completely. The best way to test this, in my opinion, is to try to give your rabbit their favorite treat, and I call this treat testing. So either a little piece of banana, a little piece of apple, or a dried treat, whatever tickles their fancy, if they are refusing that treat, that's a huge red flag. I typically will treat Tess Lennon about three times a day. And I do make sure that it coincides with her sugar intake. So again, you don't wanna overload on the treats. You can definitely cut treats in half or whatever to disperse the sugar. If she's just happy to take that treat, I know she's in great condition. I don't think that veggies or hay are a good measure of whether your rabbit is sick or not. I think the treats is the best way to do it because sometimes a sick rabbit will still munch on hay or nibble on leafy greens. But I'm telling you, if the favorite treat is a no-go, huge, huge red flag. The next sign is your rabbit is gonna be in a hunched position. And this is typically if they're going through something like GI stasis, which is one of the most common illnesses that plague the domestic rabbit. And it's basically when your rabbit is having digestive issues. You don't need to fully understand it, but I do encourage you to Google it because it's very serious and you basically have like a 12 hour window to save your bunny's life. Typically, they're not gonna fully be pressing their stomach on the ground because that's gonna be a little painful for them. They're gonna leave a little space between their stomach and the floor. They might have squinted eyes, they might have their ears pinned back, and they're basically not gonna be moving. And this brings me to my next point, which are behavioral changes. So if you don't know your rabbit that well, I really encourage you to spend a lot of quality time with your bunny so that you can get to know them. Through doing this, you'll be able to detect any abnormalities. So if your rabbit is typically very high energy or very outgoing, and now they've pulled back a little or they are withdrawing and very lethargic, then that's an indication that something's probably wrong. Or maybe you have a very soft and gentle sweet bunny who all of a sudden has become aggressive for no reason. If something is a little off in their routine and the way that they behave with you, you are gonna know. The next sign is they are hiding a lot. This kind of coincides with the hunched position but they're probably not gonna wanna come out from under the bed, under the couch. This is why it's good to always know where your rabbit is so that you can easily find them. Okay, next we have drooling. Rabbits don't typically drool like dogs do. So if this is going on, there is definitely something very wrong with your bunny. It can be an indication of maybe overheating and they're having to breathe through their mouth. Or if they're unable to chew properly, it could be a sign of a malocclusion. So overgrown teeth or teeth growing in crookedly. Hot or cold ears. Now, rabbits have difficulty regulating their own temperature, so that's why it's really good for you to always maintain 
a solid temperature wherever your rabbit lives. If your rabbit's temperature is very low, usually that's a sign of GI stasis. If your rabbit's temperature is high, then that can typically be a sign of an infection. Loud teeth chattering. This is one of the few noises that your rabbit is gonna make when they are in a lot of pain. Now don't confuse this with rabbit purring, which is when you're petting your bunny and they're really enjoying themselves. So I'll play you a snippet here of what it could possibly sound like. If your rabbit is doing this, get them to the vet ASAP. With regards to their stomach, if they are going through something like GI stasis, again, this isn't a formal diagnosis, but a healthy stomach, you'll be able to hear all sorts of gurgling and movement. A rabbit that's going through stasis is basically gonna have a silent stomach because nothing is able to go through. So sometimes you might wanna to listen to your bunny's stomach if you suspect it could be something digestive. Decreased motor skills. So if your bunny is acting a little clumsier than usual, maybe they're running into things or tripping over things or losing their balance, or you start noticing their head tilting, that's usually an indication of an infection. Sometimes it can be temporary, sometimes it can be permanent. So again, I really encourage you to go to the vet for this ASAP. Lack of stools in the litter box. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with not eating, but it is very important that you check your rabbit stools on the daily. Now in terms of a rabbit's fecal matter, uh, I'm gonna show you what healthy rabbit stools look like. They are generally dry, odorless little pellets. They're gonna vary in size depending on the size of your rabbit. So if you have a really big rabbit, their stools are gonna be bigger. If you have a tiny rabbit, their stools are gonna be smaller. So you should already know the size of your rabbit stools so that you can understand what's normal and what's not. So if your rabbit stools don't look like the gold standard, then something is possibly wrong internally. It also really helps to have some kind of liner underneath in your litter box, whether that is newspaper, a pee pad, a fleece blanket, because you'll be able to also have a record of the color of the urination. So if the color of the urination is looking a little funky, like maybe you find some blood in there or something, then you can take that to the vet with you and say, hey, this is what I saw over excessive sniffling, sneezing, and wheezing. Usually this is an indication that there's a respiratory infection going on. So again, if you notice any of that, any snottiness, anything that has to do with the upper respiratory system, get them to a vet. Now lumps, bumps, abscesses, or anything that might have like pus coming out of it, yeah, you probably want to take your bunny to the vet for that. Unless your bunny is just like a naturally lumpy bunny or something. But otherwise, if you notice something that was not there before, oh, it could be so many different things. Uh, but definitely take your bunny to a vet for that as well. And the other thing that I really encourage you to do, guys, this is so important, is to know where you can go 24 hours. Because... We all have our primary vet that's just open Monday to Friday, nine to five, but where do you go after that? And that's what you should be really looking for. Even if you have to drive 40 minutes or an hour out of town, you know, to get to that place. And I know it's hard. There's only, I think one or two in the entire city of Los Angeles where I could take Lennon for an after hours emergency but it's better than not having any at all. And Los Angeles is a major metropolitan city. So I really encourage you to look this up, look into it, and if not, ask your primary vet what they recommend you do in that situation. You can also connect with your local rabbit rescue or humane society or animal shelter because they have to deal with this on a constant basis. They deal with bunnies all the time. Remember that time is of the essence with your bunnies, you guys. You typically, if your rabbit is starting to display signs of illness, you typically might have a six to 12 hour window to get that fixed before it leads to something more serious. I mean, it's literally the craziest chain of events 
that occur with bunnies that lead to their death ultimately. And, so, and then people go, oh my God, I don't know why my bunny died or, you know, it happened by total surprise because for some reason bunnies love to get sick on a Sunday at like 2 a.m. I'm being facetious, but like you gotta know where to go and you've gotta be prepared. I think ultimately preparedness is the key takeaway from this video. Have a backup plan, have an after hours place to take them to, and also have the tools and the knowledge to take care of them until you can get them to the vet. Whether that is having a first aid kit, keeping them cool if they're really hot, keeping them warm if they're really cool, you know, just basic common sense things. Have critical care on hand, you know, have a baby thermometer. I also have a pet cam that faces Lennon's litter box. So I get notifications even when I'm out and about that you know, Lennon has been detected in front of her litter box. I can just play back the recording. Did she visit her litter box? Those are little things you can do as sort of preventative measures. Obviously you can't save every bunny, but you can do your best. So thanks again for checking us out. I hope that this video was useful to you and that you learned from it. Thanks again, and we'll see you all soon. Bye.